Welcome to Birds of Prey Sports Talk. We're your host, Jared and TJ. And um, we're having a little bit of audio issues today. Um, something random happened with one of our mics, and it just it I don't we don't we don't fully understand what happened, but we're gonna work through it because we want to provide a great content for you guys. But in this video, we'll be breaking down the Orioles versus Pirates series, which was a surprisingly a team going into the series, you know, the Pirates, while they were they were slumping, they were 21 and 17 headed in. So they weren't a slouch, you know, that, that, that means they beat, I believe they beat the Dodgers in the series, you know, so they were on, they were on a little bit of a roll, you know, kind of a small little, uh, I guess you want to call it, not, I don't want to say Cinderella run, but a small run to begin the season. So this wasn't a slouch like how it was last year, you know, so, so we're just going to get right into it. In, in the first game, the Orioles take the win six to three in late inning fashion here. The, the pot the pirates get one in the third we get one in the sixth they get one in the seventh we get two in the seventh we get three in the eighth and the pirates do get one in the ninth so it was six to two but we still come out with the win our top hitter Cedric Mullins goes four for five hits for the cycle let's uh, let, let's just give it a run for pause for Cedric Mullins just 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 balling wait say something bro hello oh I I could hear the class I thought it was silent but anyway no, I'm I'm just trying to pull up some stats while um, while you're doing our introduction all right well Cedric like I said Cedric Mullins four for five three RBIs one home run two RBI I mean two runs scored and a and a cycle so that's that's good Rushman goes two for four one RBI scores one scores once Mount Castle goes two for four has an RBI also scores once and Austin Hayes goes one for four also scores once as well our pitchers, Kyle Bradish goes six innings, three hits, one run, one, no earned runs, uh, one walk and six strikeouts. Danny Coulomb goes two-thirds of an inning, two hits, one run, one earned run, no walks, one strikeout, and he did give up a, a bomb to Connor Joe. Uh, Brian Baker goes one and one-third, no hits, no runs, no earned runs, two strikeouts. Austin Voth comes in and, and does Austin Voth things. <laughs> um, <laughs> goes no innings because he didn't record one out, two hits, one run, one earned run, and one walk. Atisa comes in, saves a day when it shouldn't have been a save opportunity, but it was turned into one. And honestly, this was late inning heroics. You know, this team, or else really been struggling overall, you know, scoring runners and scoring position. Um, and honestly, this was this is really kind of how do I say it? Irritating almost. Not irritating, but disappointing. Because I think that the Pirates flew a little too hard early in the season, and they're not gonna be a very good team. You know, I, I could see them winning like 50, I don't know, 60, 70 games this year. 50 was way too low. <laughs> but um, <laughs> look, <laughs> only winning 30 games after winning 20 games after the season is kind of pathetic. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think they're going to be a, especially since the NL Central is kind of, is kind of garbage. So I would say that they have a very good shot at maybe even sneaking into the wild card. But let's be real. Only one team's making it out of the NL Central. But I guess my first question I want to ask, Vogue should be gone, right? That's not a question. That's a statement. Uh, I It's starting to be very, very much clear that, you know, we should probably send him down for an assignment or just, I, I don't know. I feel like I'm starting to agree with you. He should be gone. because I, Yeah, because he's time and time, again, right. time, time and time again, it's just like he's just so inconsistent. Mm -hmm. can't keep up can't keep the momentum of the pitching going you know can't help us keep our lead you know or our help towards us getting back you know right if we're down so yeah right if you're down in the game and he comes in you kind of think the game's over you know he's gonna come and give up like a million runs but mm -hmm. um i guess i just want to take a little bit of time to appreciate cedric mullins yes he, he and, um... is he is one of the most underrated players in the league. I think we have a lot of underrated players. In I think the person who steals the spotlight is Adley Rutschman. I don't want to say steals. He deserves the spotlight. He's very good, very clutch. He's a great, one of the best catchers in the league. But Cedric Mullins is a very, very underrated piece to this team. He, he seems to be playing with more, you know, of a smile this year. He didn't seem very happy last year. I don't know why. He seemed kind of down last year. And it kind of showed in his stats. I believe he batted like 258 last year. If I'm right, which I know we don't go off batting average, but he didn't repeat his 30 30 season, which is kind of hard to do. But when he comes in this year and he's just, it seems like he's just balling, whether it's hitting or fielding. I mean, he'll make the play. 
to save the day or he'll hit the home run to get us back in the game or do something. He is just a perfect leadoff hitter for us. He has speed, he has power, and he has great fielding ability. I mean, we went from Adam Jones to Cedric Mullins. Like, it's just, it's great, isn't it? Like, just, and I don't know. I know Trout is amazing. You know, he's a great center fielder. He's one of the best in the game. But with Trout getting up there in age, I don't want to see Cedric Mullins replace him as the star center fielder of the league. And I can't be the only one that feels that way. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, I just wanted to point out, Cedric Mullins had uh, is the seventh player in Orioles franchise history to hit for the cycle. So I feel yep. like – you know, that was it was just a good moment to see him get his flowers, especially from the um Orioles crowd, to see mm-hmm. everybody cheer for him. Yep. Me and you were just talking about this a couple of weeks ago. There's a lot, there it's not a lot of Orioles fans, but there's a small circle of Orioles fans that all that wants to see him traded or wants to see him dealt away for some reason. And you know, when you have nights like this, it just shows how important he is to our team and like if we were to get rid of him, the chemistry would just be messed up. You know, mm-hmm. our I feel like the, I feel like even our hitting would not be as clutch or consistent as it is mm-hmm. about Cedric Mullins. So this just shows how big of a piece that he is to our team. And honestly, I feel like he's a he's the, he's in the big three of the Orioles. It's Ali yeah. Rutschman, it's uh Mullins, and then that that third person is yet to be found. But yeah, maybe like maybe about like Bautista or something like that. Like I would say know, Cano. I would say Cano for right now. I don't know. Bautista kind of took over the reins last year in the bullpen. I think it's especially since he won AO reliever of the month last month, which we didn't talk about. He went that's 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 something that happened. We should have brought that up in one of our videos, but so congratulations to Felix Bautista for winning reliever of the month. But anyway, I would say it could be a debate, you know, whether it could be like Bautista, it could even be Rodriguez for all I care. But I had to think. If, if Hayes, I mean, if, if Henderson turns it on this year, like becoming the rookie of the year candidate he can be, that'll be our top three right there. Right. That, that'll be nasty. That'll be great. So, yeah, they're, they're, you always got to have the big three, and, and it seems like it's always three in sports. So, you know, I think that this, we have a big two right now, and the third is still kind of up in the air right now. You know, it, you could put anybody. It, it's based off opinion, in my opinion. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> but anyway, um, who who would you who, so you would throw Cano in that spot? I, I you know when I when I said the big three, I mean in terms of this season right now. So that's why I said Cano. I feel like he's getting off to a great start. He's very very consistent with his pitches. Is has control of his command. He's just a zeros machine. You know <laughs> zero zero zeros. And I mean he does get some strikeouts, but you know when when it comes to hits, earned runs, you know walking people. It's just zeros, and he's just so consistent. When he comes in, I know that I can rely on him and I can trust him. I right. I feel more confident in him than Bautista at times. And it feels good, you know, as an Orioles fan, again, you know, just knowing that, yeah, when he comes in, we're in good hands. It kind of reminds me of when Darren O'Day came in, and, you know, I, it just felt like we were in good hands and that we would hold a lead or – we right. were stay in the same position that we came into the inning in, you know, yep. whether we're down one run or we're up a run, we'll stay the same. And that's how I feel with Cano. He's really brought that kind of uh, energy to the team. And speaking of trust, I believe Austin both allows the tying run to reach base or, or at least come up to the plate. And Bautista comes in in a hard spot. He comes in the ninth inning with no outs. Two runners on, I believe. I'm sure if it was two runners on. Two runners on. And comes in. There's nothing but gas. No walks and three Ks. Like, like if that's just what that's what you need from Bautista. Yeah. You need him to come in and just gas him up. Because when you're throwing 103, that's not going to be – you're not going to catch up to that. man. Only a very few can hit that ball. I could think of like maybe like maybe Otani or Judge or maybe even Stanton or whoever, you know. But those are all elite hitters besides Stanton. He's just <laughs> – but but anyway, um, I, I, Stanton, as I guess, is an elite hitter. Well, he used to be. He's just kind of – I mean, he's let's – play. He's always hurt. Let's replace Stanton with like Pete Alonzo or, or Francisco Lindor, somebody. somebody. No, not, not even Lindor. He's like – he's like that and – to something right now. I don't know. Actually, I don't know how Lindor is doing. I haven't heard much about him. You know, it's ironic. I heard more about him in Cleveland than did him in New York. 
that is weird. That, 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 that's that, weird. Yeah, that is. It, I, and that's funny because Cleveland is a small market team. So just like the Orioles. So, and by the way, I meant to say the, the two best teams in the league have the lowest payroll of baseball. Just something to think about. It just tells you small markets. We're getting up there, you know. Yeah. So I think that maybe eventually we could become like a middle market, bigger market team. I think that would probably be best for us. But I don't know. These prospects are working out pretty good. You know, Henderson's having his struggles. He could just be on a sophomore slump. That's what I believe. Because Trey Mancini had the same thing. He had a great, you know, rookie campaign when he first came up and struggled his his sophomore year and just bought out after that. Unfortunately, he got the cancer diagnosis, you know, and everything. So he didn't really get to play, I believe, in 2020. And um, but did come back in 2021. But I'm excited for the possible, you know, we could be a small market team. I think we can and still win, in my opinion. But I do want to see dollars spent on our players we have now. Like I want to see Cedric Mullins extended. I want to see Adley extended. I want to see all these guys extended because I'm not doing this, you know, four or five, six year window where we're good and then we got to rebuild again. Yeah. So we got to get these guys locked up because you know they're not they're going to be on the market and people are going to want to get them. And and I just wanted to say, you know, going back, touching back on the market for a second. You know, we are a very small market team, and I'm hoping that, you know, in the future we can become like a middle market team like how you just mentioned because I see a lot of, you know, it's like I see only bad things about Baltimore in the media, you know, in the markets 24-7, and I feel like, you know, the Orioles and the Ravens can definitely help out with the perception of that, you know, and doing good things in the community, showing that we really have good things here. You know, we really have good teams. We really have good athletes here it's not just about you know crime stuff and none of that so i mean i'm really hoping that you know in terms of marketability the team can really um increase baltimore's likeness and image in that way because we you know yeah. we really are much more than just crime and, and everything everything bad right. that goes on here you know we're special. Right, and, then, and, and okay, i'm just going to interject here and say that i mean all you're going to hear about on the news and on the social media outlets is the bad you know yeah. and there's plenty of stuff that comes in through the city through culture whether it's, you know, our sports teams or certain dances or whatever we have, you know, this, I mean, OBJ one even said that he wanted to learn some Baltimore dances and we expect him to do some Baltimore dances in the end zone this year. That'll be fun. You know, so Baltimore is definitely deeper than what the media perceives us as. And I don't know how we got here, but I'm glad we got here because this is definitely a conversation that needs to be had, you know, yeah. about Baltimore. And hey, we're, we're called Charm City for a reason. We're called Charm exactly. City. So, you know, obviously... We have our, you know, our dents and our bruises and our scratches. But, I mean, what city doesn't, you yeah. know? So, it's like, just to me, that shows the grit of our city and the pos- and the people. There's been a lot of people successful in Baltimore recently. Like, you know, like like Tank Davis. Angel Reese is one of them on the women's basketball side, you know. So, Carmelo I think we Anthony. have – Exactly. Carmel Anthony. Is, he just retired, I believe, too. So, congratulations to him. So, yeah, like. I don't know how we got here, but this is supposed to be an Orioles video, but we're, <laughs> we're going to get back on track now. <laughs> but anyway, um, we're going to head to the next game. Oh, I, oh, another thing we forgot. Forgot about the bird bath. I don't know if you saw about that. Yeah. You know, they they score people with water during uh, triples, doubles, and home runs. So that is, that's something I want to – I'm going to I want to sit down there on a hot summer day one day. <laughs> so just bring some goggles and just like – so I don't get my glasses wet. And then I, I want to do that. I don't know if you're up for that, but I, I want to do that. Just – I, I don't know how good, how much you, I mean, I don't know how much we're going to get soaked. But. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so in the next game, this game was kind of a pitching duel almost. I don't want to say a pitching duel, but we win. We got our first shutout in a while. I can't remember the last time we got one. We, we win the game 2 nothing. Yeah. We scored one in the first and then one in the second, and that's it. And nobody scores after that. And Tyler Wells, let me say, one of the also an underrated player on the pitcher side for, for us, Tyler Wells has just been fantastic this year you know he's just been a baller for us like he leads the mlb and like like whip or whatever and like he's just he's just amazing man like he really is his blossom into such a great starter for us eight strikeouts yep so our top hitters adley rutschman goes two for three as a home run one rbi gunner henderson also gets a home run as well goes one for three those are only runs of the game so um tyler Wells goes seven innings one hit one hit that's crazy one hit <laughs> No runs, no earned runs, two walks, eight strikeouts. Cano comes in again, does his thing. 
He allows a hit, goes an inning, uh, goes an inning, allows a hit, no runs, no earned runs, no walks, no strikeouts. Felix Bautista comes in, saves the day, only allows one hit, but gets three strikeouts and shuts the door down. So, again, I, I like that that little combination. Wells, Cano, Bautista, done. That's it. You win the game. Shut the door down. Only one hit allowed by each. It's just, we need this because our bullpen is used like crazy. Our bullpen is used like crazy. And it, it is good for us to get these six, seven, eight inning starts for us. It's important to rest our guys because it's only it's only freaking May going yeah. on to June. So we don't need these guys losing fatigue because we know they're all human. So they can easily fall apart pretty quick. You know, so again, and another offensive struggle. We only get five hits in the game. You know, so are you kind of concerned with this runner and scoring position issue that we do have? At the moment, I believe we were like two for freaking 26 at one point or something like that, you know. So I know early last season, we were something ridiculous. Like to start the year, it was like two for like 80 something with runners in scoring position. It was bad. And it's not that bad this year, but early on in the season, we were getting runs in from runners in scoring position. Is this something that we need to worry about as Orioles fans? You know, it's funny because um, I was just thinking of something in my head. It seems like instead of really breaking open the score, you know, if we're down, you know, and we happen, you know, to score and come up, it seems like we will only score just enough, like just what we need, like not anything more. And, you know, that kind of goes into your point. It is kind of disappointing that we can't cash in on those opportunities. Cause I mean, honestly, it seems like, you know, we could be down one to zero and we can have, we can end up having the bases loaded. And it seems like, out of that whole situation, we we yeah, will lead one the inning. Run. Yeah, we will lead the inning leading up like two to one, mm-hmm. and then that'll be the final score of the game. You know, yeah. it seems like we score just enough with what we need instead of cashing in those moments. And while it's good, I keep saying moment, but I'm gonna use it again. While it's good in the moment, I feel like come playoff time, we really need to start cashing in those opportunities. Because right. even if you look at mm-hmm. Orioles teams in the past, like 2012, 2014. We never cash in on those opportunities. And that's what cost us those series. You know, we need to, you know, learn how to be a little bit more, I say a little bit more disciplined, you know, not swing at pitches in the dirt, not swing at pitches all the way up here. You know, I feel like we just need to cash in on those opportunities. And yeah, that's what comes into gelling. You know, I, I'm I'm praying that as the season goes along, we'll start to understand these pitchers more and you know the stuff that they're throwing at us. So right. you know, yeah, you know, I, I wish we could cash in in those. I feel like this season is definitely better than last, but still could be better. Yeah, I mean, I have to fully agree with you, honestly, because it'd be really nice just for one night. We don't got to use our top relievers because we got that one big inning and we're winning eight to one or nine to one or ten to one for all I care. Score thirty runs if you want to. It's just like it just feels like we waste a lot of opportunities, you know, to really put the game away. You yeah. know, and it really is kind of irritating because, you know, it'll happen a few nights in a row and then you'll use Cano and Bautista because you have a short lead. And then you'll they'll when you need them in the game, the next game, you know, in a game where it's only like you're losing by like a few runs and you need to stay in the game. Who would you want in that scenario? You want a good reliever like Cano out there or yeah. Baker or whatever. But guess what? You used them the night before because you could only score a few runs in this situation. In this moment, as your favorite word, <laughs> but and then you got to bring in your kind of borderline trust guys and Austin Voth, Mike Bauman, Keegan Aiken, who's in the minors now, so you can't bring him in. But Danny Coulomb, all these guys who are, are on and off. Voth is more off, but like Coulomb is like he's like you don't know what you're gonna get. You know, it's either he's gonna allow a 900 foot bomb or he's gonna get all the three outs. So mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what it seems you like. Know, I actually have a question for you. So. Do you think that, you know, how do you think that, you know, if we don't, let's just say by the all-star break deadline, if we don't get, you know, at least a starting quality picture via trade, you know, acquisition or whatever, are we going to have to be one of those teams that just adapts to every situation? You know, we can't just rely on one thing, you know, like past Orioles team, we relied mostly on our power. You know, like, do you think we're going to have to be one of those teams that's just going to Every situation is just a different thing uh, got to adapt to. I think that this team has already showed that they're very good at adapting in certain situations because 
we're not that power hitting hungry home run hungry team anymore. We got to be the gritty, you know, get on base and score guys, which is kind of our thing in a way. So it's not good when we're leaving runners on base like that. And it's like the old Orioles couldn't play small ball, in my opinion, but the new Orioles feel like they can do that. And they can, when they're doing it, they do it well. And honestly, it'd be ideal for us to get a starter. But if we don't, I think it is going to take a lot of adapting because, you know, I don't know how long our starters can get us through the season because, yeah, they might be good middle of the way of the season, but when the schedule really starts to ramp up, I mean, in August and September, we're playing some really good teams. Like, we're not playing teams – after the All-Star break, I should say. We come in the All-Star break, we play the Marlins, I think, which is not, like, a fantastic team, but then we go right to the Dodgers. So it's like there's no, you know, rest. You know, I believe before the All-Star break, it's the Yankees and then the Twins and then All-Star break and the Marlins and Dodgers, like, that's just stretch right there of two weeks of, like, damn, like, that's pretty good teams, you know? So, I think for now, we're we're doing good, we're doing great, I think that we're, we're good for now, but we do, I still think we need a starter who's going to come in and be consistent, like, pitch six, seven, eight, even a complete game if we need it, just to rest the bullpen. It wouldn't, it also would be nice to maybe get another bullpen arm that we can trust. You know, like an Andrew Miller type of guy, you know, just yep. come in, help our postseason push. And that would be very helpful for us, in my opinion. So, yes, I do think that we we can adapt. I really do think we can do that. This team is very young and unexperienced at the same time, but they learn pretty quick. And that's why I'd be excited, you know, to see them adapt to different situations. Mm. Sorry. Anyway, so so we already won the series. Now we're going for the sweep on Mother's Day. Took my mom out to this game, got tickets. I just want to say, if the Orioles are listening, which I know damn well they're not, <laughs> why are you giving out only 15,000 bags? My mom did not get a freaking bag for Mother's Day. You want to know something even more pathetic? They gave them out to males <laughs> on Mother's Day. Like, are we serious? Like, we're giving out stuff for Mother's Day to males? That's pathetic. I was mad. And my mom told me she had a dream about that, too. The, the night before that... We like we, in fact, not only did we not get the bag, but we got we got kicked out of the stadium for some reason. I forgot what happened. So we didn't get kicked out of the stadium. We didn't get the bags. So come on, Orioles, you gotta do better than that. Oh, I bet oh, you, oh. Right. And if I come in on Father's Day and I see you're only giving hats to dads, I'll be very upset. You know, that'll be a, something questionable. It went to the Sons too. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> so anyway, we lose the game for nothing, unfortunately, on Mother's Day. All, absolutely offensive stink fest. Pirates get one in the first and three in the third and then nothing after that. And we score absolutely nothing. I forgot, I forgot the box score. Our top hitters are honestly nobody. Yes. <laughs> Mom went two for four. That's it. <laughs> That's really it. Oh, Hayes went two for four too. Ooh. Anyway. Oh, and Kyle Stowers goes over four and his batting average at the time is 0. 0.067. So that's always fun. Kyle Gibson gets a loss. He goes five innings, seven hits, four runs, four earned runs, three walks, five strikeouts. Bauman goes two thirds. I mean, two. I mean, two innings, no hits, no runs, no earned runs, one walk, three strikeouts. Perez goes an inning, no hits, no runs, no no walks, no strikeouts. Both goes also an inning, no hits, no runs, no walks, two strikeouts. And honestly, the Orioles Sunday woes just continue to beat them up. I believe we. I believe at the time we're want to say. Three and three on Sundays, and I guess that's not too bad, but just not. I, I we need these sweeps, you know. Like if you have the chance to sweep the freaking series, just sweep the freaking series, you know. So it was kind of irritating to be at that game and see the offense just thinking. I believe the freaking starting pitcher had like thirteen strikeouts, and we struck out together seventeen times. Yeah, you're not gonna win many games when you're striking out seventeen times, you yeah. know. So that's very disappointing. And I will say it, it kind of also kind of gives off the impression like we're kind of slacking off, you know, if we've already felt like we won the first two games. Uh-huh. Just kind of like, you know, taking the third game off, like, you know, yeah, we won the series, you know, let's just right. let's not take it as seriously. Let's rest up for the next one. And it's like, you know, it th- those games add up, you know, those third games, yeah. getting those sweeps, they add up towards the end of the season. They, you know, they make, right. they put a little bit more fear in other teams. Like, okay, they, they're sweeping a lot of guys, you know. Right. And, and and another thing, the wins are gonna add up. So as well as the losses, especially in this AL East, which is the best division in baseball. 
So mm-hmm. you need to take those series, take those series wins, and take those series sweeps. So this, I'm glad we're winning series, but it'd be nice to sweep them too. Yeah. So, but anyways, I forgot to check. Um, our record by the end of this series was is 26 and 14. So 12 games over 500, still in second place. We're gonna be fighting for all year. That's that's all I feel like. This team, they're always in it. You know, this isn't 2019 through 2021 where we got our faces kicked in every night. <laughs> you know, this team competes. This team fights, and I'm I'm proud of them just to, to continue the success and continue to be doubted. In my opinion, you know, people are starting to catch on, but I know people still don't believe in us yet. And I think there needs to be a series where we strike fear into people like, oh, they're not playing around, and whether that means going up to freaking going, going playing to the Dodgers and sweeping them or the Yankees and sweeping them, whatever it is going, going to a team's house and beat them or let them come into your house and kick them around. So I don't know. It would just be really nice to be, have a statement. I know they're not worried about that stuff, but as fans, we worry about stuff like that. So anyways, um, so we do win the series two, three. Um, do you have any last thoughts here about the series versus the pirates? Uh, you know, just, Another good series went under our belt and on to the next. Yep. Our next series will be against the Los Angeles Angels. We've won the last really seven matchups against them. So we are, I believe we swept a four game series versus them last year. So we're doing pretty good. <laughs> but anyways, um, that's all we have for today. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe and share, share on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, wherever you can. And we're birds of prey and we're out. Oh, Thank you.